Right, let's read together. Psalm number 11. In the Lord I put my trust. How can you say to my soul, flee as a bird to your mountain? For look, the wicked bend their bow. They make ready their arrow on the string that they may shoot secretly at the upright in heart. If the foundations are destroyed, what can the righteous do? The Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord's throne is in heaven. His eyes behold, his eyelids test the sons of men. The Lord tests the righteous, but the wicked and the one who loves violence, his soul hates. Upon the wicked he will rain coals. Fire and brimstone and a burning wind shall be the portion of their cup. For the Lord is righteous. He loves righteousness. His countenance beholds the upright. Father God, as we... Read Psalm 11, O Lord, that you would stretch forth your hand and touch my mouth and put your words in my mouth, please, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Did you notice the question? Did you notice the question that we read? If the foundations are destroyed, what can the righteous do? Foundations have been destroyed and are being destroyed daily, monthly, weekly, daily, monthly, yearly. I, I am from South Africa. In 1994, the ANC, the African National Council, took over South Africa. They were terrorists who were fighting against Rhodesia. We were fighting with Rhodesia against them. Then they came down and they starting, started fighting with us. We were on the borders. I was on the border fighting against the terrorists who were trying to come into the country and we were beating them hands down until, until Westminster said stop resisting them. And we stopped resisting them and they became the government in South Africa. That government is at the moment trying to bring a charge of genocide against Israel. They support Hamas. And they've asked for a stay They've asked for an extended time to get their facts together, but it has been denied because they cannot find any facts to support their, their, their accusation of genocide because there is no genocide. But the point I'm coming to is not what they're doing at the moment, but what they started to do in 1994 when they, got, when they were given the government. They started to change the name of the provinces. They started to change the names of the towns. They started to change the names of the streets. And for your information, many towns you will be familiar with. Newcastle, Dundee, Glencoe, Salisbury. All these names are names of towns in England that were named in South Africa as well because those who founded them were British Britain came and they fought in South Africa and they left a heritage. Towns were named after people, generals, leaders in the army. I was born in a town called Ladysmith. Lady Smith is the wife of Sir Harry Smith. Harry Smith is a town on top of the Drakensberg Mountains, a neighboring town to Ladysmith. I was farming for a long time in a place called Bulwa. Bulwa is named after General Bulwa, who commanded the British Army. And so our heritage in South Africa is very, very closely tied to Britain, because Britain came and colonized South Africa. And so the foundation that we had built on our society in South Africa was built on history. The history is being demolished. It is being erased so that people's memories will not be brought to understand where we got to and how we got to this point. They want to close everything prior to 1994, erase everything before that, so that they can start with a new historical record from 1994 to prove that the Europeans had nothing to do with South Africa. That's what's happening in South Africa. Uh, but the heritage is changing worldwide. Everywhere things are changing. And I'm quite sure that every single one of you 
are aware of the times that we are living in at the moment where our heritage is being erased slowly and radically. It is being erased, it's being washed out, it's being wiped away so that the lives that we knew and relied on, the systems that were there, are no longer available to us. What about NHS? My, that's now, that's a stalwart company to be able to stand by, is it not? Well, I've tried to talk to a doctor for months, and I failed. I can't see a doctor. So the NHS, to me, is just, uh, well, it's failed. Part of the heritage that we've inherited in England was the NHS, free health care. If you can get it, it's good. If you can't get it, well, tough luck for you. And so we find that the foundation, I'm just talking about the earth at the moment, we find that the foundation is falling apart. But what about spiritually? What about spiritually? We're here this evening to worship the Lord Jesus Christ and God the Father and the Holy Spirit, the God three in one. We grew up knowing and believing and trusting and still do that God is the creator of the heavens and the earth, that Jesus died on the cross, rose again, and he intercedes for us at the right hand of the Father in heaven. We believe with all our hearts and with all our souls and with all our minds that we are going to heaven when we die. We believe that's where our brother Keith is. We believe that, don't we, with all our hearts. That's where the foundation of our faith is. What happens if the foundations are destroyed? Have you ever wondered what the foundations of our faith are actually really? What is the foundation? Is it Jesus? Yes, it is Jesus. But what does Jesus represent? What are his qualities? What does he hold up? He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. The way, the truth, and the life. Psalm 81.5 says, All the foundations of the earth are unstable. Justice is being perverted. All the foundations of the earth are unstable. He's not talking about the earth. He's not talking about the earth. If you read the, the psalm, you'll find that he's talking about spiritual matters things that are spiritually stood by and accepted and, and held dear are unstable. The government is unstable. The government does not believe in Christ. They do not believe in the Bible. They do not believe anything that we believe. And so they will do everything in their power to undermine the stability that we have. This building is built on foundations. I can tell you exactly where those foundations are, even not having been here when it was built. Look underneath the walls and you'll find the foundations. That's where the foundations are. The building is not built outside the foundations or inside the foundations or nearby the foundations, on top of the foundations. Our foundation is the gospel that we have, the good news that we have from the Lord God Almighty who causes Holy Spirit to inspire men to write the word of God that we have. And so that foundation to us is impeccably strong. Yes, it is strong. The foundation is strong. However, what about my connectivity to that foundation? How am I connected to it? Am I strong on that foundation which has been laid for me? The very foundations that we believe are trying to be destroyed and are being destroyed. To the point that we are told in the book of 2 Thessalonians that possibly even the elect might be deceived with the deceit that is coming in the world. Already the deceit is so bad, not only spiritually but in the world as well, that people are complaining about the internet, that they see images there that they do not believe, that they think are true and they find it's a lie. People are be being deceived daily 
The banks are being overrun with complaints of things that are happening because the, pro the foundations of what they believed and thought were true are broken down. But what about the reality, the real foundations? That that we hold dear. I believe in Jesus. I believe in God Almighty. I believe in the Holy Spirit. I believe I'm going to go to heaven. I believe that the Bible is God's word. There are many, many versions of God's word that are out there in the open for you to read. Not many of them are genuine. Not many of them are true. But there are some that we can adhere to and rely on. We have the old King James Version. I've got the new King James Version that I, that I hold by. I've also got the 1984 NIV, which is a brilliant Bible. The, the 1984 one, not like the new ones. They are rubbish. But the 1984 one, almost word for word, except for one or two changes, is the same as the new King James God's foundation, we are told in Psalm 87 and verse 1, is in the holy mountain. Not on the earth. It's in the holy mountain. So where do we take the credence or the, the surety of our foundation from? Is it from the church? Or is it from my, my, my adherence to the truth of the Lord Jesus Christ? And my obedience to his commandments, as we are told. For my love for Jesus. The only way that I can prove my love for Jesus is if I am obedient to his commandments. And by obedient, being obedient, there has to be an outworking. He says, love one another as I have loved the church. Love one another as I have loved you. And so the only evidence that I can show is my love for my brothers and sisters that Christ is in me. I have a reason and a purpose. I have a relationship with my brothers and sisters. And I'm told to bear with them. I'm told to love them. Love is not just some manner of attitude. Love is a determination to see a relationship through to the end. Marriages fail because the love is not exercised. And all of a sudden, the spouse is not as good as I thought he or she would be, and not as I perceive it to be. When we get married to our husbands or to our wives, we promise to love them till death do us part. Our integrity is put on the line. Are we going to trust and are we going to do this thing? And we need to say, yes, we are. That is exactly the same as our relationship that we have with the Lord God Almighty. What is the relationship with the Jews and God, Father God? Well, he considers them his wife. That he says he's married to them in the book of Jeremiah. So that is what his attitude is to the Jews. What is my attitude to the Lord Jesus Christ? Well, he's the groom, and he's coming to fetch me one day, and I'm part of the bride of Christ. But how solid and how strong are we, individually, corporately, and in the body of Christ, able to hang on to the truths that we have been given? Because the foundations are in danger of being destroyed by virtue of the, the volume of attacks coming on the church. It is crumbling. The church consists of two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve of us, which is possibly, and I'm guessing, an average sized true church today. If you find churches of hundreds or two hundreds or three hundreds, well, I think you can whittle that down to the genuine number of people that are actually following and doing what the Lord is wanting them to do. The church is a good place because it has good morals, good integrity, good messages. There's a standard which is held too. But that does not mean that it is the true church. Many people go to church maybe just, and I'm talking, um, I can be corrected, but many people will go to church just to get away from the rat race. They just want some normal, old-time peace and quiet where people respect one another. But that's coming to an end. People are changing. 
And unless we keep ourselves changing to become imitators of Jesus Christ, we're going to go the other way by virtue of the company that we are keep. Bad company corrupts good morals. And so we need to hang on to the foundation that we have. The question, if the foundations are destroyed, what can the righteous do? Is a very, very moot question. What can the righteous do? We can be as righteous as we want to be in Christ. We can follow his commandments to the T. But if the foundation is destroyed, what can we do? Society is trying to break foundation down. My wife was telling me yesterday, and I quite, quite remember if I've got it all right, she said, on the Coca-Cola tins and on the Pepsi tins, you can, you've got the opportunity to write whatever you want. And what they write is, I love Allah, or I love Buddha, or I love some other God. But when you say, I love Jesus, the answer comes back, oops, we've got a problem. And you can't write that. These are the biggest companies in the world which are rejecting Jesus. And it's not only the biggest company, but that filters down through the, through the workers, right down to you and me, the people on the ground. Everyone is against Jesus. We know that street preachers have been arrested. We know that people standing outside an abortion center praying silently just for the poor babies that are being murdered or being arrested for thought speech. We better read again uh, George Orwell's 1984 and remember what he wrote there about the thought police. The foundations are being destroyed. What can the righteous do? Well, I believe that all the righteous can do is stand, as we've been told to do. Put on the whole armor of God and to stand, and, having, and withstand and having done all to stand upon the words that we have. It doesn't matter what happens in society. And you know what? Some, one of the most horrible truths that there are is that we are all dying. Keith went to be with the Lord the other day. Death comes. It doesn't matter how little we want to speak about it, how much we try and, 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 and put it up in fluffy uh, coverings. Death is death. And that comes to every single man. We cannot change it. When, it, when we die is just one of those things. We don't know when our time is up, when our soul is required of us. But if we deny God, what are we going to do? If we fail on the foundation, what are we going to do? We need to have the guts and the ability to be able to stand, knowing that to be absent in the body is to be present with the Lord. And I'm not trying to say these things to scare us. I'm trying to face the reality. It's lovely to have a Bible study. It's lovely to have... Uh, a, a meeting where we talk about history and what Daniel did and what Noah did and what Job did and, and what happened in Genesis. But what relevance is that to me today when I tomorrow have to go and face the world? The world was as, which is trying to break down the foundation upon which I found my very faith and my belief in Jesus. Am I equipped to be able to stand against what is coming? Who knows when? and in who knows in what manner. We don't know. But we need to be prepared. And we need to keep our eyes open, and we need to be convinced. Convinced to the point that those 11 apostles were so convinced that they went to death voluntarily, happily to be martyred because of what they believed. They believed Jesus had risen from the dead and they believed that they were going home to be with him. So come what may, we're not going to deny Jesus. Do what you want to do. A home is in heaven. That was basically their message. But are we able, do we have the guts and the, the, the ability to withstand the threat to my existence or 
am I going to capitulate and say, oh, I'm so sorry, I didn't mean to offend you? Through fear. Fear is a very, very real concept. Have you ever faced fear? You won't know until you do face it. That's the problem. It's not until you actually are in the situation that you can understand what your response is going to be to that particular situation. You don't know because you've never been there. But we have to be prepared to meet whatever might be coming. And the only way we can be prepared to meet it is to know him in whom we have believed, God Almighty, who made us, who gave every single human being breath and life. Tony read from Psalm 146 today that when he dies, the spirit returns and he returns to the earth. The spirit will return to him who gave it. They can kill my body, but they cannot kill my spirit. The spirit returns to God who gave it. We need to know where we are. Because right now, as it stands at the moment, we are told in the book of Isaiah, chapter 59, and uh, verses 14 and 15, justice is turned back. Righteousness stands afar off. Truth has fallen in the street, and equity cannot enter. So truth fails. And he who departs from evil makes himself a prey. He who departs from evil makes himself a prey. But justice, righteousness, truth, equity, those are concepts of the Lord Jesus Christ. I am the way, the truth, and the life. If there is no truth, justice will turn back. Righteousness won't go anywhere near and stand afar off and look at truth lying fallen in the street. Are you prepared to stand for the truth upon the foundation that we have been given? What is the foundation that we have been given? And where did it come from? Well, if you read in the book of Ephesians chapter 5, you're told there that we have the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. And we are one of those. To be able to get it absolutely correct, he says there in that book of Ephesians chapter 2, after spending the whole of chapter 2 describing who we were, what we were, dead in our trespasses and sins, and how we were removed from, from God in the Old Testament because we, had not, we, did not, we weren't part of the Jews, and so we are aliens. But Jesus came and gave us peace, and now, therefore, he says in verse 19, Now, therefore, you are no longer strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and the members of the household of God, having been built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom the whole building being fitted together grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you also are being built together for a dwelling place of God in the Spirit. We are integral in the plans of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the book of Peter, we are told that we are being built as living stones for a temple of God to worship in. We need to realize that we are so valuable in the eyes of God that he would send his son to die on the cross for us. His blood, his blood has been applied to the, to the lintels of the houses. Do you remember in Exodus? But not only that, his blood has been applied to the doors of my life. And I'm covered by the blood of Jesus. No matter what happens, no matter what happens, I am covered by the blood of Jesus. My sins are washed. I am redeemed. And I'm going home to heaven one day. But troubles are coming. And who knows if the troubles are coming before Jesus comes to take us home, whether we die or whether we get raptured, I don't know which is going to come first. The signs are there that Jesus is going to come soon. I pray that it is so. But until he does, we don't know when it will be. <coughs> Jesus said in the book of Luke chapter 6, verses 46 to 49, build your house on the rock. 
Build your house on the rock. And then he goes on and he speaks about the man who built his house on the sand. And the winds came and the rains came and the house came crashing down. But he who built on the rock, the winds came and the rains came and the house stood because it was built on the rock. Well, the winds of change are happening in the world. It is a spiritual change. And I can, I can put my head on a block that it is a spiritual thing because how do you rationalize what has happened in the last 10 years to man-made catastrophes, to all the illegal immigration that's happening in England, Canada, America, Australia, New Zealand, all those are Western countries. All those have Christian values. And yet the borders have been broken down. Illegal immigrants are coming in. And it's not illegal immigrants as in families fleeing and needing immigration because why was us we've been kicked out. These are all fighting men. They are young, strong, military-aged men. England... I'm afraid, is in a very, very dire situation. Before I came to England, it must have been 10 years before, and I'm guessing, but a little long time before I, the thought had even entered my mind to come to England. What do I want to come to England for? But I'm here. But I read and I saw a map of England. And the map of England had some cities highlighted, and I remember... A little bit of it, but there was a crescent of cities starting with Birmingham, Manchester, Birmingham, I can't remember, but it was a crescent ending in London of cities to be Islamicized. What do we have today? Sadiq Khan in London. What do we have in Birmingham? What do we have in Manchester? What do we have in the northern countries? People are scared to walk in the streets. Why? Gangs with machetes. We can't even carry a pocket knife without getting arrested. And yet they can go open with machetes. Folk, we need to understand the reality of the situation that we have in England. Thank the Lord that we are still leading peaceful lives. And may we continue to pray for the government that we will lead peaceable lives until Jesus comes to take us. But let us not rest on our laurels with a, a false sense of security. Our only security is on the foundation that we have. That is all. There's no government that's going to save us. We are Christians. We are born-again believers. We are pilgrims. We are not counted in the Lord's eyes as members of the earth. We are citizens of the kingdom of heaven. So we need to take hold of what we have and pray earnestly, waiting for Christ to come, that he hears our prayers. Pray for the government. Paul says, pray for the government because this is God's will. Pray for the government that pray somehow. I pray that God, Father God, I pray for the government, but confuse them so they can't do all the things that they want to do. Stop them from getting... Victory in the abortion area. Stop them from getting victory and trying to close down the people. But I pray for the government because those are the rulers. And do you know what? They are there because of the population of England. The normal population is turned away from God. England is now the most ungodly it has been in history. That's the reality of who we are. We sing, stand up, stand up for Jesus. Yes, do that. But pray and pray and pray harder. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. We need to take hold and we need to stand up and stand up for Jesus. We are going to fight a war. The Bible is a military book in a sense. It's about a war of death and darkness against light and life and eternal life. That's what it is. Right from the very, very beginning, the war against Satan. It is a spiritual war. We are collateral damage in the spiritual war. The gain is bodies and souls of men. Read about it in Revelations. It's you and I. 
And so we need to take hold of what we have, the promises in the Bible, and pray that the Lord will cause some sort of barrier. Everyone's heard about the the sandbags because of the floods that are coming and all sorts of nonsense. Well, how about let's get some sandbags in our prayer life as well. God, remember me, please. Lord, I'm praying to you. Let me not be tested beyond what I am able. But with the test and the temptation will come a way of escape. God is faithful. God is just. He will not leave us nor forsake us, he said. He will look after us. Do we believe the Bible? Well, then we better believe the good and the bad about it. We would better believe that there's hope in this. But with hope comes testing, with hope comes trials to prove what manner of people we are of. God doesn't want cowards. We're told in the end of the book of Revelation that cowards, they have no place in the kingdom of heaven. He knows how strong we can be, but he knows how weak we can be. And all he's asking us to do, all he's asking us to do is stand. Stand. If somebody comes to you, he's not asking you to go and fight. He's not asking you to go and find some bunch of Muslims down the road to say, hey, I'm a, I'm a Christian. What are you? you, you that's, Allah's no good. And, and whatever they might say. He's not asking that. He didn't say in the book of Ephesians, put on the whole armor of God and go out and wage the warfare. He said, withstand and having done all, stand. Stand upon the word of God. And our job, preaching the word, encouraging people, is to get them to the point that they're able to stand. Stand on your own two feet. How often do you say to the little kid, get up, come on, walk, you can do it, you can do it, you can do it, stand. And he totters, and you'll help him. You're not going to push him down, and you'll hold him, and you'll stabilize him again. So come on, my boy, walk, come on, another step, another step, another step. God our Father is looking after us. He says we are little children. We are little children. How much do we know of the Bible? Well, very little, I believe, of the reality of what we have from Genesis to Revelations. We try to understand it. But he calls us just to stand. You don't even have to walk hard. Just stand upon what you have. But stand. Don't give way. Don't give way. Nobody will help if you turn away, but stand upon your promises, upon your precepts, upon your principles that God has laid upon your heart, and God will do the rest. And so if the righteous, if the foundations are destroyed, what will the righteous do? What will the righteous do? I believe that we have to stand. That's all we can do. God knows the situations. God knows the times that we're living in. God knows what's coming upon the countries, and God knows you and I. And so all we can do is just stand upon the promises that he has given us. May God bless you, and may he look after you in your days to come. Amen.